Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezoning and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request unless time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Brevard County Commission Planning and Zoning Board. It is September 5th and 5 p.m. And with that, I'll call the meeting to order and just ask that we take a moment of silence. Commissioner Lober? No, please. I pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Okay, we don't have any minutes for approval um, under resolutions. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I have the distinct honor this evening of honoring <clears throat> the achievement of these young men out here that represent two different teams. So would Russell and Jason come to the Dais, please. I'm going to read the resolution, then I'm going to ask you guys to just give me your comments on the season and anything you want to say. But I want to tell you, the, the entire Vieira Sun Tree is extremely proud of what both of you have done and what these kids have done. Whereas, the athletes of Vieira Sun Tree Little League, aided by their volunteer coaches and parents, recorded a number of outstanding performances during the 2019 season. And whereas, both the juniors and majors baseball teams won their respective Florida State Championships. As cool as that is, we're not done. <laughs> Whereas the Vieira Sun Tree junior, Little League, junior League Baseball team went on to win the Southeast Regional Championship. And whereas the Vieira Sun Tree Junior League Baseball team then advanced to the United States Championship <laughs> of the Junior League Baseball World Series and came within one game of winning the championship of the entire United States. Mm -hmm. Whereas, these teams and their coaches represented Brevard County by demonstrating the highest standards of sportsmanship, team spirit, and pride. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, does hereby congratulate the coaches, parents, and especially the athletes comprising the aforementioned teams, done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this fifth day of September, 2019. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve this resolution. Motion by Commissioner Smith. Second. Second by Commissioner Lober. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. You have the floor. <laughs> uh, thank you, County Commissioners, for uh, this resolution. We appreciate it. Um, I'd also like to thank our community. It was unbelievable the way our community came together to support uh, these young men. Uh, I'd like to thank the parents. The parents played a huge role um, in, in giving up their time and, and energy uh, to go on this ride with us. Uh, these young men, they pretty much gave up their summer to, to do this, but I'm sure it was worth it. I'm sure they, they'd be happy to do it again. Um, you yeah, I uh, we, <laughs> <clears throat> thank you guys for uh, acknowledging these boys. They, they put in a lot of hard work. 
uh, they spent, I mean, we practiced every day. And then once we kind of won state, just like our major teams did, we, we had to leave right from uh, our state tournament and go to Southeast Regionals, which was in Warner Robins, and we were in uh, Northern Virginia. So then when we won in Virginia, we had to come back home for two days and went back to Michigan. So <clears throat> it was a lot of time and effort, but it was all worth it. And um, a, lot of the guy, a lot of the kids, um, the hard work paid off. And I, I would say if you asked every single one of them, they would do it all over again. I mean, because we, we started about it. A lot of these boys have been playing baseball for most of their life. And uh, so it, it, it was definitely an experience. But we have a baseball from our team. I'd like to uh, give you his, his autograph by every one of our Yay. players. It's just very cool. And, uh, and I also I want to echo what Coach Cheatham said is all the support of the Vier Suntry uh, community was a was a big boost and we're thankful for that and thank you guys for everything well i can tell you we we <coughs> the community just not the commissioners but the entire community the whole brevard county community uh live vicariously through you guys we read the papers we listened to all the stories and and just wished you well the whole step of the way every step and it was a lot of fun to watch thank you so thank you very much we thank you for all of your success and your hard work guys Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay, guys, come on. Are we doing all of Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's as close as I ever came to yeah. winning a championship. That emptied out pretty quick. Yeah. That's about half the audience. Yeah. Okay, moving on to consent. I have no, no public comments. Does the commission want anything pulled from consent? Okay. I don't have any cards. Make a motion to approve consent, Madam Chair. Second. Motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Smith to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. 
Item G, public comments, Charles Tovey. Charles Toby, 2555 Roberts Road, Melbourne. I'm glad things are humorous. Um, 1998, went out and looked for a piece of property to buy to raise my family and my soon-to-be wife. Instead of a thousand acres of a side of a mountain in the Philippines, I chose the piece of property I thought was going to be the highlight of my life. Well, it is a highlight, but not a good one. So 1998, I moved from my commercial piece of property to Roberts Road. Five years, didn't have a problem. 2005, Palm Shores gets annexed into my area and surrounds me. I'm an island in the middle of Palm Shores. That's when the attacks came. First it was my FEMA trailer, then it was the 100 year oak that got my neighbors been clearing my property and toppled over and that didn't work. I paid my fines, I complied. So they figured, how can we get them now? Well, my boat went through all those hurricanes and all that stuff, never had a problem with it. And then one day I go to register it. It was a couple days before my birthday, which falls on a holiday, and I had to make sure my boat was registered before my. So I went down to registration, and when I come back, my boat was gone. What happened? Oh, it was inadvertently taken by Matt Culver and Ernie Brown. And that was okay. Inadvertently taken. No, it wasn't inadvertently taken, it was deliberately taken. So I paid the fine. Went to get my boat back, now, oh, stand back. And then they put a big old hole in it, and yeah, they were snickering and thought it was funny as well. So I paid the fine, got my boat back. Then they put a lien against my house for the boat that they inadvertently took, fined and feed me to put a big hole in it, and then they put a lien against my house. Well, I complied. I put the boat and fixed the boat and everything. Got the trailer for it. And <sighs> what happened next? Well, they couldn't find it. They tried to burn me out of my house. Then after that, what happened? Well, then it was the, um, what was it? Repeat violence from the mayor. That didn't work. Then what, what come up? Now? Oh yeah, the permanent injunction was the last thing. And this is where I stand, and I was hoping to get five minutes, but that's fine. And I appreciate our clerk of courts for his dedication to our country and county and the sacrifice he made, as well as Mr. Charbonneau, God rest his soul. Thank you. Okay, that's all I have for public comments. Commissioner Lober. Just real briefly, uh, Ms. Bentley, do you, do you recall, uh, it's probably been some months now, uh, our having had a conversation about the boat removal of Mr. Toby's? Um, not specifically. Yeah, because I, I, I just wanted to bring it up because it's not the first time that it's, it's been brought up to the County Commission. My, my recollection, and if there's anything that you later find out is inaccurate, I would invite you to bring it up at the next Commission meeting. But my recollection is we did have a conversation about that. Um, and from what I was advised, the taking of the boat wasn't inadvertent. I don't recall what the specific circumstances were because it's been some months since we spoke about it, but I, I do recall that it was an intentional taking as a result of either some issue with code or some issue with statute. I just don't recall which off, off topic, but that was something that was concerning to me when I heard that the first time. So, um, you know, if there's a question, I would just in, invite Mr. Toby to, to perhaps get with staff and then they can better advise them as to why what was done was done, because I, I don't think that there's uh, necessarily a meeting of the minds when we're saying that something was, was done with respect to that being inadvertent, and I, I would just hate for there to be a misunderstanding um, that, cause any kind, that causes any kind of lingering animosity. Okay, before we move on to public hearings, um, you know, we, we, we public noticed, obviously, that this meeting, and given the circumstances, you know, we made every effort and I'll let uh, Tag go into a little bit more 
about our efforts to contact people that were on the agenda, but our willingness to, to listen to the hearings since you know, you're prepared to be here, so. Yes. Good evening, Commission. Yeah, we have a little unique circumstance here today with the county offices being closed, but the meeting continuing. So to avoid any confusion, our staff reached out to all of the applicants and informed them that the meeting was gonna be going forward as scheduled. Um, and we also reached out to everyone who has submitted a public comment by email. And that were anybody that we had email addresses, we sent them an email to let them know that it was gonna be, um, the meeting was gonna continue as scheduled. There were some folks that had like a petition with numbers. We, we were not able to reach out to everybody that was included in any petition, but we did take make an effort to contact everybody that we could. Great, thank you. All right, item H1. Okay, item H1 is a request for a change of zoning classification from GU to AU on 2.09 acres located on the north side of Date Palm Street, um, just west of Florida Palm Ave. And this is for the purposes of a nursery and nursery sales. Commissioner Pritchett. Yes, ma'am, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, a second by Commissioner Lober, and I have no comment cards. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H2. Item H2 is a request for change of zoning classification from RR1 to AU. Property is 8.88 acres, and it's on the south side of James Road, just east of Friday Road. And this is for the purposes of boarding horses and having horses for hire. Commissioner Pritchett? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, a second by Commissioner Lober, um, and I have no comment cards. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H3. Um, item H3, I believe, is being tabled. Is that correct? No. Okay, sorry. Item H3 is MDP Properties and Rojo Holdings. Um, it's a request of change of zoning classification from RU210 to RU113 and RU212. This is on the east side of Highway US-1, um, just south of Mar MacArthur Circle. It's in District 1. I have a card for Del Kelly. Okay. Did anybody have any questions? Are you the applicant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, uh, Commissioner Pritchett has some questions for you. Yes, sir. Um, I like your project, okay. and I, I think where these items are starting to go are very beautiful, and I think it's going to be great housing. And I was going to just ask you, um, since we're going to increase the density on it, that um, I know you're going to try to get sewer, but it might be a little bit out there, and you already have an ability to do 50, so I was just going to request, if you wouldn't mind, right now there would be a 65 removal of load, Ms. Barker, is that correct? For the septic right, tanks? The, the septic overlay is 65% nitrogen removal. So I was just going to ask if you would keep it apples to apples. So I think you told me if, if you just move that up from 65 to 70 for the, for, for the septic tank, if you did it, or the, or the sewer, I would be so happy to pass this. Would that be okay with you? That's fine. Okay, so would you, would you mind just doing a BDP with, with county on that? And if you would, I, I, I'm, I have no qualms with it at all. That's, that's fine. Do I work with Virginia? Or yes. Mrs. Barker, yes. Sorry. Yes, so if, if um, I know we're gonna, whatever has to go through with this, but if, if we do that, I make a motion to approve this with that BDP. I'll second it as well. <clears throat> motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Lober. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Good seeing you. Thank you. Have fun. You see okay. Item H4. Item H4 is Marker 24 Marina LLC and Marker 24 Development LLC requesting a uh, CUP for mitigating a non-conforming commercial marina in RU 111 zoning classification. This is um, the removal of the residential areas. So it's going from 8.88 acres down to 5.97. And it is, uh, sorry, let's see. It is on the west side of South Banana River Drive, just north of Orris Ave. Okay, I don't know if the applicant is present. Okay. I've got a disclosure on this as well. Okay, I don't have a card for you. Do you want to come up and speak on it or do you just want to be available for questions? 
Okay. If you do speak, I'll have you fill out a card if that's okay. Commissioner Lober? Okay, I just had a disclosure on this before we do anything else. I've met with the applicant on at least two occasions. It might have been a third occasion on this particular project. Um, I did see with respect to this that there was a, uh, a small number of folks that had submitted some concerns to the county. Um, and essentially what it appears to me to be is that they deal with the buffering on the south end of this. Um, with respect to that, I, I do also see that we've gotten, it looks like today, some revised conditions addressing a six foot concrete masonry wall. Um, I would just have to defer to staff. If staff thinks that's sufficient to address the concerns that have been brought up to staff, I'm happy with it. Um, but I, I just, I don't know what contact staff has had with those folks because I'd like to see this go through, but I, I just don't know what information they may have provided staff that they didn't provide my office. Yes, sir. So the, um, the conditions that were proposed were, were initiated by staff. Um, and I believe that they were, the Natural Resources Department was looking for some clarification. The wall, I believe, came out of the PNZ meeting where they were going to have a fence on the southern buffer and ask for a wall. The, uh, the applicant has agreed to, to do those. I appreciate that. Now, I'll just point out as well that the applicant's been great to work with. Uh, I had some concerns that they incorporated in a revised CUP, including making sure that they maintain the pump out so that we don't have folks put their boats there. And then, uh, lo and behold, the facilities that are in the boats get discharged in the lagoon, so they have modified the CUP that's been included with this. So I'm, I'm very happy to have uh, had a, a good experience working with them and to find that they were amenable to, to making changes that will benefit the environment. So I'd go ahead and move to approve it. Does it have to does it have to include those items the motion and I would suggest that the that the motion include the um, conditions that were passed out tonight which were the ones that have and the applicant the, the knows yellow, these conditions yes correct? yes ma'am we were they actually submitted those okay. to us on Wednesday we just haven't had it I'm sorry last Friday we didn't Perfect. have a chance to get them circulated and just for purpose of minutes I, I noticed the applicant did go ahead and nod um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and incorporate those by reference into the motion Motion by Commissioner Lober, second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. And I should note for the record there was no public speaking card, uh, comment cards on this. Okay, item H5. For item H5, we have JSFS Land Trust, Jacob and Faye Shapiro. Uh, request a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation from Res 4 to Res 6. The property is 9.79 acres. It's located on the north side of Ranch Road, just west of Grisham Parkway. There's also a companion rezoning, and I believe Ms. Rosenka is here to speak on behalf of her client. Uh, good evening, um, Madam Chair, members of the County Commission. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, because of the storm, I have applicants, I have one that's in Miami and one's in New York. They couldn't be here, so they're asking for continuance. Also, I had spoken with Commissioner Pritchett last week, and she wanted us to work on the access issue with the county being closed. I haven't had a chance to do that. So I'm requesting a continuance for both of these matters to uh, October meeting, please. Okay. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Smith, to table to the October planning and zoning meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And that, I take it that applies to H5 and H6? Correct. Perfect. Do you want a separate motion for item H6 to table or is it obvious? It's fine for the tabling. Okay. 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 Item H7. Item H7 is Barbara and Joseph Tulski requesting an amendment to an existing BUP, BDP in BU2 zoning classification. This is really um, to correct a, an, an inter, inadvertent omission um, of the BU1 uses. Um, this item, I believe you saw it in February, is just coming back to make that correction. I'll go ahead and move to approve and hopefully be ready for this time. <laughs> Okay, I have a motion uh, by Commissioner Lober, a second by Commissioner Pritchett. I have a card. Did you just want for questions? Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item H8. 
Item H8 is a request from Ray Colgan uh, for transmittal of a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation from residential one to residential two. The property is 52.53 acres and it's located on the north side of State Road 520, just west of the intersection of State Road 524 and 520. It's in District 1. Any discussion? Ms. Rosenka, did you want to present? Or I didn't know if you had comment first. Or okay, you want her to speak? I, on I, I okay. see that you have the the PowerPoint up. I don't know if Mr. Dana is here or not. He's right here. Yeah. So um, again, Kim Rosenka, uh, Cantwell and Goldman, 96 Willard Street, here on behalf of the Applicant Beachland Managers LLC, who is the authorized agent for uh, Mr. Colgan. I don't have anything to add other than what was said at planning and zoning other than staff seems to um, say it's compatible with what's around it because res 2 is behind it and I would just answer any questions or perhaps respond to Mr. Mr. Um, Dana's concerns. I believe he has spoken with uh, Beachland Managers Representative Chad Giannone and uh, Mr. Giannone believes that this development will improve his drainage concerns and obviously that any new development will comply with the county code regarding floodplains and drainage and no adverse impacts. Other than that, I would ask that you approve the comprehensive plan change for transmittal from Res 1 to Res 2. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Pritchett? Yes, ma'am. This is just sending through the transmittal and yes. I, I think a lot of the problems that you've got to work out will be done in the engineer's engineering portion of the project. So I'm fine with this, so I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Lober. Do we have a comment? Hmm? No comment? Okay. Um, just, yeah, this only one card. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item H9. Item H9 is a request um, for transmittal of a large scale plan amendment for Bavari Medical City LLC to change a future land use designation from planned industrial to community commercial. It's on Wickham Road in District 4. Um, this one we are requesting a tabling as so applicant moved. was not present at the previous meeting. Motion by Commissioner Lober to, to table. To October 3rd. Second by Commissioner Tobaya. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Item I-1. Commissioner's item I-1 is a proposed interlocal agreements with the City of Coco for the US-1 corridor community redevelopment agency in Diamond Square. Uh, the county has negotiated with them. We started back in uh, August of 2017. We had three meetings back in uh, August 9th, August 24th, and uh, October 18th. Uh, unfortunately, uh, while we sent a draft agreement to the city at that point, we were not able to get a mutual agreement between the parties. And so we continued those efforts. Uh, as you know, a variety of things happened during 2018. Uh, the city uh, modified a pre-charter CRA. Other additional negotiations occurred subsequent to that. And uh, during March 2019, we began having some uh, emails and exchanges relating to these two items. Um, the county attorney and I did meet with the city manager in August of 2019, and we were uh, successful in among staff uh, reaching and negotiated agreements that we bring before the board uh, this evening. Commissioner Pritchett? That's an old one, right? Commissioner Lober? Hey, Mr. Abate, I was just hoping, if you don't mind, you could give us a, a little bit more info in terms of the, the last couple of rounds of negotiation, uh, namely what changed uh, from what uh, what was where things were left off prior to the break in, in, uh, in the summer? Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, a couple of things happened. In the US-1 corridor uh, agreement, There, it will be closing uh, two years early 
that will provide a significant additional general fund and some parks and recreation in the area of about $150,000 a year of, of what otherwise would have been TIF money will be um, coming back to, to the board. Um, <coughs> on the Diamond Square, uh, a couple of things would be happening. One, there was 2014, there were amendments under the Central Local. We would be utilizing that um, revised agreement, not amendments, the revised agreement that was developed by the city. That would become the basis as we move forward. Um, they changed the staffing, in uh, the membership on the uh, board, the CRA board, will now include a county commissioner. It, um, and also, they will have uh, term limits that um, uh, will apply after the completion of the current term of the uh, current board members. Um, if they have reached the maximum, then this will be their last term. That's in the agreement as well. It does extend the CRA uh, for a 10-year period. Um, that <coughs> CRA does have a cap on the TIF payments that the county would pay. Um, a cap of $150,000. They are currently at around 80,000, and so it is a, you know, a fairly uh, depressed area. Um, and so, compared to other CRAs, uh, the amount of TIF payments that are involved are a lot lower than many of the other uh, municipalities that have um, agreements. And so, those are basically uh, the, the majority of the uh, the terms that we were uh, able to get into the agreement. The final one dealt with a cap on the administrative uh, charges that could be used um, from the county's portion of the TIF dollars. The remainder of those administrative expenses would have to be borne by the city through their uh, TIF dollars. So that's all in the proposed agreement that we've presented to the board tonight. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Abate. And, and particularly, I appreciate your negotiating to, to try to get that and successfully getting that admin uh, cost cap. That was something that was of great concern. And I think when I came back from the, the board break, uh, it didn't look like that was going to be in place. But um, whatever you and Ms. Bentley were able to, um, to convey to the city, I think certainly did work. Um, I will tell you, I was pleased leaving for the break where things were. I was displeased when I got back from the break. Uh, and I, I think we, we have it in a spot where it's, it's better overall for all involved now. Um, frankly, I didn't think this was going to work out when I got back from the break based on some comments that I heard from staff. Uh, but I, I think Coco got uh, quite a bit more reasonable. Uh, in terms of CRAs, I just want to point out from my perspective, certainly in my district, um, you can be pro-CRA, anti-CRA, you can be somewhere in the middle. But if we're talking about blighted areas or areas that really need a CRA, this is it. Um, if there is an appropriate CRA anywhere in my district, I don't want to say countywide, there may be something else that, that I'm not as familiar with, but certainly in my district, if there's any place to have a CRA, this is really the one place. Um, I think that Coco may have misunderstood our negotiating position for a little while, but thankfully that was rectified. So I'm, I'm going to move to, uh, to go ahead and approve this and, and authorize uh, staff to sign it on behalf of the board unless the chair needs to sign it. I have a motion by Commissioner Lover, a second by Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Tobia. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I want to thank uh, staff for working so hard on this agreement. And this initially does sound like a positive. Uh, unfortunately, we are extending a CRA that has a track record of wasteful spending. An example would be uh, this CRA uh, spent money sending its board members to a resort, uh, the Sanibel Harbor Merritt Marriott Resort and Spa a hotel that's designed as total relaxation, complete with a princess yacht, multiple cabana bars, and three outdoor swimming pools. This CRA has been an utter fail failure. And if it was just looking at the two CRAs here, this may be a good equitable deal. But unfortunately, the city of Coco extended the downtown CRA without gaining any consent from the county costing far more than the amount that will ever be saved by sunsetting the US-1 CRA early. You, by the way, the board unanimously voted to ask the CRA to shut down early, and yet they extended anyway. So again, I appreciate uh, um, staff working so hard on this. This may be better than what we have right now. However, extending a 
utter failure of a CRA that's had 20 years to deal with this situation and has yet made no measurable difference, uh, I don't think is a positive way to go. So I will be voting this one down. Commissioner Lober. I, I just want to go ahead and I, I appreciate the, um, the reference to the, was it total relaxation? Was that the term? Or total comfort? Madam Chair. Yes. Yes, according to the Sanibel Harbor Merritt Marriott Resort and Spa, uh, it is a place of, quote, total relaxation. That sounds good. I, I can tell you, though, uh, not to, to try to detract too much from that, but uh, I've gone to conferences at Ritz Carlton's and JW Marriott's because that's simply where they hold the conference. Um, I'm not there for the relaxation. I'm there to, to do my business and then get out. Um, I don't know that any of them were charging massages or uh, pay-per-view movies from their rooms uh, onto the, the CRA. If that's the case, then I'd be more concerned. If it makes you more comfortable, even if this isn't something that'll bring you on board in terms of supporting it, I don't mind modifying my motion to include that we would also have a provision added saying that they cannot have any travel expenses for board members, because I, I don't think that's an inappropriate request. If that makes you happier, even if it doesn't bring you on board. Are you hitting your button because it's not showing up here? So, sorry, Madam Chair. That's okay. You got it. Yeah, I, I fully support you using your hard-earned uh, dollars to go to any resort. My issue with, and I have no problems with Sanibel Harbor Marriott Resort, it's just out of my price range. Uh, my issue with uh, uh, is using tax dollars, specifically county tax dollars. So uh, um, again, I don't think it's a fair reference to say, you know, uh, you going to visit these type of things. That certainly, I think, would be a step in the right direction. However, um, we're not we're not we're dealing with uh, folks that uh, within I think this happened just before your term extended the downtown CRA. Uh, and again, they don't need uh, the consent because it was prior to the charter. But to put in perspective, that will cost taxpayers uh, about $7.5 million over the next 30 years. So if we're looking at savings here, uh, yes, there will be a, a couple dollars of savings. However, what COCO has done to county taxpayers is inexcusable. And again, I will be voting this down. Okay. Commissioner Lover. Just, just briefly, I, I do agree with your sentiments with respect to the downtown CRA. I don't like what they've done with that. Um, but I, I try to work with the cities, the municipalities, where I can and when I can. And that essentially for me, I don't want to say it's water under the bridge, but it's something that I think we have to treat that way in order to have a productive relationship with them. I do agree that that, that could have been handled much better on the city's behalf. Um, but that said, I'm looking at what's before us today with respect to, to sunsetting the US-1 CRA quite a bit earlier. Um, and basically taking one of the smallest CRAs in the county or one of the smaller ones in the county and extending that, given, again, that that is truly a blighted area. I don't think anyone's come here and argued otherwise. So I'll, I'll go ahead, even if this doesn't bring you on board, and you know, I, I doubt that it will, but we'll see. Uh, I'll go ahead and modify my original motion to, to authorize the chair and or county staff to execute this with the uh, addendum of there being a requirement that um, the CRA does not expend any funds uh, to have any board member uh, either, st I guess we could just say to, to prohibit travel expenses by any board member. I think that's, you have a fair concern and given the, the history, I, I don't think that's inappropriate. So I, if you think it's a step in the right direction, I'm happy to do that. Commissioner Pritchett. Yes, Commissioner Loeber, are you gonna be serving on this board then? Re Realistically, um, what I had originally sought to do was to get someone that I could designate on the board. Uh, I wanted to have a designee instead of putting myself on there. I thought it would just be a bit cleaner, but my understanding is the statute may specifically require either someone that resides in the district or alternatively the commissioner, him or herself. I think your district commissioner would be appropriate on it. Yeah, and, and given the restriction, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I would tell you there are other folks I think that could do a good job, and I know that one of the items that Mr. Abate and I left off at the end uh, in terms of one of the discussion points that wasn't you know, truly a critical one but was something that would be nice to have is to have them permit a designee of the commissioner if it's, if it's permitted by statute. And I, I think my designee would have to live in that CRA area. So it's, it's something where if, if a commissioner has to do it, I'm happy to do it. If someone else wants to do it, uh, I'm happy to let someone else do it. But you know, I'm pleased to do it as well. Yes, sir, because that would be taxation with representation, which would be good. Um, Mr. Abate, I, I know this area, it is very blighted. We also got another area in West Cocoa that needs a little love too, but that's 
down the road with another idea because I don't think we're going to be forming any more CRAs. But what is the, the tax base right now in this area? It's pretty small, isn't it? Um, yes, that's why. We don't get a lot of tax yeah, that's dollars, why right? Have, yeah, that's why it's only the 80000 I And mean, we have some CRAs that are very significantly higher than yeah uh, than so one. so what will happen is is we'll do this and hopefully you know with you on the board or they'll start doing the right type of development now we'll never get less than the amount we're getting right now the only thing that's going to happen is to increase this so if we take a very blighted area and they start doing well it's actually good for the county too and that area because it helps reduce the crime rate, it gets people working. So I think this is going to be a very good project right here, and and uh, and I'm glad you're involved in it. And um, I, you know, they're capping at 150,000 too, which is good. So you know, if they become very um, focused on what they're doing, you know, we're only going to be giving 150,000 to it every year. So I, I think this was a great negotiation, and I think probably forming of CRAs in the future aren't going to happen. They're going to have to figure out some other way to do it. But I think if we had one in the county that we had to work on, that this is it. So I think it's a good one. Commissioner Lover? Yeah, as, as bad as it is perhaps to say, uh, prior to our storm missing us, there were some abandoned buildings in that area. And I thought to myself, it might actually improve the aesthetics of the area, God forbid, if, if you were to have the storm. If it had to selectively pick which buildings to take out, there were some really rough buildings that I think were hurting the adjacent property. So this, this area, I would, I would second what you said in terms of it being truly blighted. Um, it, it's an area that I think is going to require some time to, to improve. Uh, I think the, the fact that US-1 is being sunset, that carries a lot of weight with me. I think without that having happened, it would have been somewhere between unlikely or impossible to have me in support of extending this one at all. Uh, but with that said, uh, you know, my motion stands with respect to, um, to approving this and authorizing signature with the one addendum dealing with the uh, prohibition of travel expenses for board members. Okay, my second holds, Madam Chair. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Lober, second by Commissioner Pritchett. Did anybody have any more input? before I gave my two cents. Um, I understand what you're trying to do, Commissioner Lober, but you can't undo the 20 years where they didn't do anything in this area. And it's unfortunate, but I, I have the greatest heartburn with the extension of the CRA that, over, for the 10 years. Normally, you know, again, I think, I think that this is a compelling case for a CRA. However, you know, as much as I am against them, this is probably the most compelling case. Extending it after 20 years of doing nothing out there, I think is a bad idea and it sends a bad message. So I won't be supporting this, although I, uh, I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. All right. With that, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Take that back. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes 3-2. All right. Item I-2. All right, this is another fun one here uh, that I believe got continued off this past meeting on account of the, the length of it. So essentially, this is, um, this is an item that I put forth to try to make things a little bit more manageable um, for commissioners and then also for appointees on these particular uh, committees that have been outlined on the second page of this item. Um, I'm happy to, to do this essentially in aggregate where we move to uh, set the duration of, of term length to two years by reference to all of these, or I can do them individually if someone has one or, or, more, or more that they'd like me to pull out that they have particular concerns with. But essentially, although I support term limits that are reasonable in length, this is kind of the, the other extreme where it becomes bad, where you have folks that serve on a board just long enough to become a little bit skilled at it or uh, moderately skilled at it, and then you, you have them off already. So something like an investment committee uh, you know, some of these in particular, local planning agency, P&Z, to have someone on for a one-year term and then to say to them, well, thank you for your service in which you finally learned how to do this right. Um, goodbye, you know, please apply again. I, I just don't know that that's the most efficient thing for, for them or for us, quite frankly. So, you know, depending on what folks' thoughts are, I'll, I'll make a motion accordingly. A second. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and move to, um, to set the term limits for all of these by reference. Uh, to two years. I have a motion by Commissioner Lober, a second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item I-3. This is the policy on board operating procedures and administrative order 23. The board previously had a board policy 55 and a resolution. 
that addressed um, board procedures. This is a consolidation of the board policy and the resolution. Um, for the most part, it simply combines them. There are a few areas where there are changes, and those areas are speaker times, the agenda request process, and electronic presentations. And it's up to the board whether they um, adopt this item or leave everything as a status quo. Okay, any input from commission or did everybody have a chance to review this? All right, I'll entertain a motion then if there's no discussion. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, a second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion passes 3-2. Yeah. Thanks for the input on commenting why. Just, just vote no and not tell us. Board reports. Mr. Bate. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. I just wanted to uh, speak for a moment on um, the preparations that were undertaken for uh, our residents and our county for the anticipated arrival of Hurricane uh, Dorian. Um, as the major hurricane neared our coast, we opened 14 evacuation centers with 350 county employees and activated our emergency operations center to level, level one not, uh, lockdown with another 100 plus employees. In addition to uh, county commissioners who also participated in it, um, we were grateful that I was able, we were able to stay in communication with all five commissioners and, uh, and your active involvement as, as, as this uh, uh, storm um, proceeded. Um, fortunately, our county was spared the harshest impacts from this, but um, had that uh, not occurred, I feel confident that our county employees alongside with representatives from a host of other local, state, and federal agencies who were embedded with us at the EOC were ready to promptly respond and immediately uh, begin recovery effort, efforts. I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly express my deepest gratitude to each and every county employee who participated in providing essential services to our county and our residents before, during, and after the storm by either working out in the field, supporting our evacuation and sheltering efforts, or for their involvement in uh, the Emergency Operations Center related uh, activities. Um, we do have some very uh, preliminary numbers in terms of uh, damage assessments and why we were spared um, a lot of damage. Uh, Parks and Recreation has already identified nearly $800,000 worth of um, uh, damage that uh, uh, we're going to have to deal with. We still have three parks that the water level is too high for them to further evaluate those numbers. Uh, from a beach erosion standpoint, staff has got very, very preliminary numbers. Uh, we believe it may be in the area of three to five million on South Beaches and possibly four to five million in the mid reach area, <clears throat> but those are very preliminary numbers. For emergency protective services, that includes uh, the Board of County Commissioners, the school board, which the county is responsible uh, under the state's interpretation of statute and regulations for the school board, and then we'd get reimbursed if FEMA provides reimbursement. Um, hospitals, the sheriff, and uh, cities, and hospital and cities, they do their own reimbursement, but the sheriff, the school board, and us, we're one. Those total uh, emergency protective services costs, we estimate to be nearly $6 million in terms of uh, what that would be. And so we are, are seeking and believe we will be able to get through uh, the state and, and FEMA to be involved in that uh, based on the numbers. There are certain thresholds that need to be uh, to, to be met, but we do believe we are uh, moving in that direction. So I just wanted to report to the board um, uh, the activities that have been occurring. And that's uh, it for my reports. Mr. Abate, could you just include also, too, there's been some question. I know, you know, having been with you in the EOC and us trying to figure out a way to best plan for what our office is being open. I know you did everything in your power to try to get us open today. Can you just explain a little bit for those that have the question of why we were not able to have all government offices open today and how we had employees working 24 hour shifts getting off and then right. would have to report to go work in their <clears throat> office an hour later, that sort of stuff, because I don't think people fully understand what goes into right. the Un understanding that you know, and that's why I use the number. We had 350 employees who were on lockdown at various shelters. 
that means they were working at least 24 hours and until through yesterday and when the decision was made you know many um, employers didn't make the you know made decisions a lot earlier than we did um, some of them were the larger employers were you know out um, through Thursday or Friday we were consistent with the state we were consistent with the school board and a part of what we were doing in addition to those 350 we had a hundred plus employees and others that were on lockdown at the EOC through yesterday morning and so the day before we did not make the decision early um, but when we got to Wednesday morning um, we thought best um, to make that decision so people could plan and, and know what to do. And so, you know, that was my responsibility. That was my uh, decision. I did uh, seek input through the policy group and, and others there. And uh, those are, uh, you know, primary reasons why we did what we did. Thank you. Ms. Bentley? No report. Commissioner Pritchett? Yeah, I just I just want to say how thankful I am that this storm didn't come up our coast. It it could have this would have been a really bad situation for our county and I just really want to thank the Lord for blessing us and protecting us the way he did. I mean, we got very minimal winds and it wasn't looking good for a while. I'm I'm just so thankful. So I just want to thank the Lord right now for that. I want to thank Commissioner Isnardi for camping out the whole time in the EOC. I know that was um it would be tough. Commissioner Tobiah was there too. Oh, Commissioner Tobiah, thank you for that too, mm -hmm. sir. So I, I just want to uh, thank you for that because um, I know you guys don't get to have a lot of showers and the food's real bad. So <laughs> I want to um, thank you for that. And I want to thank you, county staff, first responders, for all you did. And I, again, I'm so glad we didn't have a storm, but everybody was storm ready. And I'm really impressed with everybody's professionalism and how prepared they were. And I'm also very impressed with our community. Everybody seemed to be getting ready for it. They were um, in good moods. There was so much kindness up in our community, and I'm sure you guys had that too. And I am so proud of Brevard County and how they handled um, a situation that could have been potentially horrible and um, their patience and working it out. So I just, I just wanted to say that. And I want to thank the County Commission. I think you guys are wonderful. You're great commissioners. And um, each and every one of you really care about your districts. And I just, I just want to tell you all that. It made me very thankful. I had a very thankful weekend. So thank you guys for all you do. And Ms. Bentley and Mr. Abate. Thank you, Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Lober? Can we go ahead and echo those same sentiments? I'm not going to call out too many people, but there are a couple uh, that I'd like to, to give a little recognition to from my office. Um, Fritz uh, in the plaid over there. Uh, certainly did his part in, in working the, uh, the shelters, as did Kika. She was over at the um, uh, Vieira Community uh, Center, not too far from here. I went over there to, to check things out and make sure everything was running well. And I can tell you, for the situation and what it was, it was about as good as you could expect. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I think everyone likes sleeping in their own bed, but when you don't have that option or, or it's unsafe, um, all things considered, it was a, a pretty good setup. So I think the county did as, as much as it possibly could with the limited resources that we have. Um, last item on the same topic, just as we were lucky and fortunate and blessed not to have the storm uh, have the impact that a lot of us, certainly that I anticipated it would have here, um, the Bahamas were not in, in the same level of, um, of being fortunate. Uh, Melbourne City Councilman Paul Alfrey uh, reached out to me not terribly long ago, a couple days back here, uh, to try to help him publicize an initiative uh, that's got quite a few different entities, including the City of Cape Canaveral, uh, Cocoa Beach Regional Chamber of Commerce. I'm not going to list every single one of them because we'd be here for far too long. But essentially, they're doing a, um, a supply drive to get supplies together for folks that have been impacted by that. It's going to be held Saturday, September 7th, so this coming Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Essentially, they're looking to get any of the following water, canned goods, manual can openers, MREs, non-perishable dry goods, baby formula, juice, food, cereal, first aid supplies, water filtration devices, mosquito repellent, which is an amazingly big deal, uh, flashlights, batteries, hygiene products, and diapers and baby wipes. They're doing that at several locations at Rocket Town Church in Titusville, at City of Cape Canaveral, their City Hall, uh, City of Satellite Beach City Hall, 
Cocoa Beach Chamber of Commerce at two locations, both on Fortenberry Road in Merritt Island and then also on Colonnade Avenue in Melbourne. So if folks are able to help out in any way there, I would certainly encourage that. Uh, or if there are any other entities that are doing that, if you all make me aware, I'm happy to, to share it with everyone I know. Uh, I'm not particular to, to one group over another, so if there's anyone else that's doing a drive, let me know and I'll do my best to publicize it as well. But thank you everyone for, for your, your help with the situation. It was something that um, I think we handled as well as we possibly could. Commissioner Tobia? No report, Madam Chair. Commissioner Smith? Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to echo uh, the sentiments of Commissioner Pritchett, uh, thanking our gracious God for protecting our state and steering Dorian away from our coast. And thank everyone in the county that sacrificed their time and their comfort, like our chair. Um, for the benefit of our citizens. Our citizens benefit from all these good folks that give of themselves and, and uh, step up in times of difficulty. And without sounding like a broken record, and I would love to mention all the people that I you know, had fun with and was able to do things with, but I would worry that I would miss somebody in thanking them for all the hard work that they do. So Frank, since you're at the top of that food chain, I'll thank you <laughs> and thank the staff. Thanks, thanks for making me feel useful, you know, as a commissioner coming in there and, you know, not being part of finance, not being part of public works or not being part of, you know, any major department. You at least found a few things for me to do to make me feel useful. And I was proud. And I mean, it's, it's kind of mind blowing the amount of work that they do. And you don't really fully understand all of the hard work that goes into managing an emergency and all of the resources and different departments and you know Maria Stahl I'll, I'll you know I'll mention her name because she's the director of the health department and just watching her manage not just her staff but the shelters and special needs and you know working with our Ian to make sure Ian Golding to make sure that those shelters were were properly manned and our special needs um, shelters were run properly so I just want to thank everybody I think we have amazing staff and I think we do amazing things and I almost wish the public could see all of those amazing things because it it's great to be a part of it. And, and thanks for letting me help. And thanks, Commissioner Tobia. He doesn't like any praise or recognition, but he was there hunkered down in the, in the EOC with us and was helping make phone calls to help to get employees um, to, to where they needed to be for the storm. So thanks, everybody. All right. Anything else, Commission? All right. With that, I'll adjourn the meeting. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.